okay there was a lot okay so uh, fine friends i just wanted to take 5 minutes because uh, every talk that i give this is something that i always uh, make it a point for sure that it is going to be a two way conversation number 1 and number 2 any moment that you wanted to ask me something you can go ahead and ask me and i think for a few you must have already listened to this talk say for example anna maria i think this is going to be her second time listening to this and the others i'm not sure um, i'm not sure so can uh, like i wanted to know even if your voice is also audible to me and the speed that i talk is also understood by you so can i have a few uh, students just unmute yourself in and, and say something no no what what no hello we can hear hello. you <laughs> that's fine can you hear us yes i can hear one minute maybe i i need to have okay so let's start friends you know why i gave this topic uh, like wonder bioactive compounds mission possible like among the students in this group can i know how many of you are fans of the movie series mission possible sorry mission impossible this is a question that i'm asking you i just wanted to know how many of you uh, like the movie series of tom cruise mission impossible i am <laughs> yeah i like can you just raise your hands you aha uh -huh. yes yes same perfect wow okay um like friends it is okay even if you cannot answer me in english at least can i know that you can understand what i'm talking perfect madam have you put this on record you were asking for record i i couldn't see anywhere that the meeting is being recorded <laughs> Oh, perfect, perfect. So, yeah. Now I'm happy about two things. One, I have many friends in this group who like the movie series. Thank you, uh, thank you, Cavello. Uh, okay, what were we talking? Yeah, I'm happy about two things. Number one, I'm happy that there are a lot of friends in this group who are uh, fans of Tom Cruise and uh, uh, who who love the series, the mission, the movie series, Mission Impossible. and the second thing that i feel happy about is i like i whatever i talk is understood by you that is the biggest thing that i really uh, like in this meeting so the reason why i kept the topic wonder bioactive compounds mission possible is just tom cruise and his team will always take up very difficult jobs and then it is only tom cruise and his team who will make the mission possible and they'll come out with all awards but i don't want just tom cruise and his team to have all success i want all of us to have success so this bioactive compounds from plant is something where you can make success i can make success so every one of us when we work on it it will definitely give us success that is the reason why i had this uh, presentation as wonder bioactive compounds mission possible so once you are on the mission it is possible for us to prove a lot of things so this is the reason why i had this topic so for the next 
uh, how many minutes probably 30 40 minutes how long can i take my room take your time friend take your time two hours yeah. three hours yeah, okay could, be, could be one one is enough one hour is enough right mm -hmm okay perfect so for the next one hour whatever you're listening to me is all my own life experiences of pressure and, and an ocean of Gomaji. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, friend. There was a call and oh oh sorry. oh oh there's there are a lot of messages running. Yeah, because your inter internet was not working. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Okay. I'm back, friends. Yeah, the video stopped. I'm back. I'm back, Newton. So the next one hour or 50 minutes whichever is possible we are going to see an ocean of these bioactive compounds so plants for india it is a paradise of medical medicinal plants it is we consider the country to be paradise and i also consider brazil also to be the paradise of medicinal plants because i have seen a lot of plants a lot of medicinal plants being grown in brazil brazil is three times bigger than india and its population is one sixth of India. So such a big area and very few people. So I could definitely bet that Brazil is also gifted with equally important medicinal plants where even you can also call Brazil as a paradise of medicinal plants. So being the paradise of medicinal plants, these plants are bestowed with innumerable bioactive compounds you know it, it is it has a rich chemical diversity all the plants have got rich chemical diversity so say for example when i say rich chemical diversity this is something that we all know plants prepare their food in the form of starch following the process called photosynthesis so they prepare their own starch so in addition to starch, there are a few primary metabolites the plant synthesize for themselves. So when they synthesize, um, when they synthesize these primary metabolites, they also synthesize secondary metabolites at the time of their defense action. So whenever the plant is under stress or if they need to protect themselves from some environmental issues or from some animal bite or so from uh, a bacterial or fungal infections, the plant prepare their own chemical compounds as secondary metabolites as a defense mechanism. And these secondary metabolites are bestowed with innumerable uh, beneficiary properties. So in other words, I can say that these secondary metabolites act for us for several pharmaceutical applications. So I think this is something like a series which is happening for a week, if I'm not wrong, Anna Maria. So how long is this series been happening? Yeah, the classes? One week. So, so this is the fifth day, if I'm not wrong. So you, oh, the last day. So you're already spoiled. So that is nothing new that I can all spoil you. <laughs> okay okay that was that was for fun i was just kidding yeah well so you might have heard a lots and lots of informations you your mind must be bestowing with a lot of knowledge anyway so for this talk i just wanted to be uh, a two-way conversation so you can stop me wherever you want whenever you want and this is not between me and your professor meru or me and uh, anna maria it is between you and me, you, me, me, everyone in this session. So this is how this is going to happen. So now, for now, I was explaining you what plants are, 
what is meant by bioactive compounds what are primary metabolites and what are secondary metabolites and these secondary metabolites which are produced by the plant for their own defense mechanism is being used for the humans so we use it for several pharmaceutical applications so this secondary metabolites is what we call bioactive compounds now again coming to why wonder bioactive compounds is these bioactive compounds have got wonderful marvelous properties where you can this you this is a gift to several of our problems so i think by now i can start sharing this slide um anna maria just let me know if the slide is visible yeah i'm just sharing So may I know if the slide is visible? Yes. Since you know that there will be a ten-second time lapse, I hope now this is spoiled. Okay, so now this is all okay. It's not spoiled now. Perfect, right? Okay, friends. So let's get into the job. So now it is six o'clock. I think hardly I can finish things in forty-five minutes. So the next forty-five minutes is going to be just you and me. Okay, so wonder bioactive compounds mission possible. I had explained to you why I say this is a wonder bioactive compound, and also the reason mission possible because you can work, I can work, you work, it gives you success. I work, it will give me success. So whoever works, it is going to be a success. So next, and of all these are going to be uh, my journey from two thousand seven onwards. So I would uh, try to tell you five different stories of these bioactive compounds to start with. uh i i worked with the fruits of muntenjia calabora and the next one was banana suro stem the third story is about sapanil the fourth story is about scolopia carnata an endemic medicinal species and the fifth story is about volatile profile so uh before starting the story i think now you can see this slide so this tree is called muntenjia calabora and this tree is present all over uh all over the globe you can find it everywhere and these are the fruits of muntenjia calabora the birds love to eat the fruits and if you have tasted it it will be so sweet uh so there was a tree outside my home and a lot of birds used to come sit on the tree eat these fruits where these fruits are found all around the year irrespective of the seasons the tree will have its flower all around the year therefore pollination happens any time and every time and you can find fruits on the tree always so therefore this tree has got fruits which it is an evergreen tree and you can find fruits at all times but one thing so ridiculous about this mundanja calabara was i have never seen people eating these fruits so it is an indication that when animals and birds eat the fruits it is an indication that we can eat and this is safe and this is also edible so with that in mind i collected a few fruits from the tree and when i tasted they tasted so sweet it was seriously so sweet and then when i checked on the uh, internet like i i'm talking to you a story that happened a decade back probably this happened around the year 2000 uh 72008 more than a decade back okay so i collected a few fruits and when i tasted it was they were so sweet they were really sweet so what we did was we collected the fruits and we subjected to extraction now one thing about this fruit is uh so before i enter into this there is something that i really need to tell you about bioactive compounds so i was talking to you about the secondary uh, metabolites so this secondary metabolites form a group of compounds say for example polyphenols catenoids and a few sugars peptides fatty acids organic compounds uh what can i say nucleotides nucleosides uh so all these form secondary metabolites so when a plant has got secondary metabolite can i characterize can i know if this sample has got bioactive secondary metabolites then my answer is yes how could i identify so there are several characterization techniques where you can really identify that 
these are the bioactive compounds say for example that this is a polyphenol this is a flavonoid uh, this is a carotenoid uh, this is a nucleoside this is a nucleotide so there are several characterization techniques where you can identify these compounds in addition to several bioassays say for example spectrophotometric determinations fluorometric determinations chromatographic determinations enzymatic and electrophoretic determinations will all give you the lead on the kind of bioactive secondary metabolites present in this plant okay so with that in mind the first step what we did was we extracted polyphenols because one good thing about polyphenol is they are mostly thermostable and it is very easy to use you need not be very sensitive that either heat will denature it or if some plant or viral infections will denature it no nothing will happen to these polyphenols okay so we extracted it and second thing is uh, again when it comes to bioactive compounds there are two major things that this world will look for one is a single chemical entity on the other is a group of compounds having synergistic effects uh, say for example why are these two differences mainly seen in the world number one the reason why they give importance to single compound entity is once these bioactive compounds are being taken in the next second what will happen is they will be dissociated into the human body okay so that is the reason where a lot of scientists while testing for its pharmacokinetics they would ask for single chemical entity and at the same time uh, you know these bioactive compounds will not have a single target they will have multiple target so therefore again it is a matter of question that some people see it as a positive thing and some people see it as a negative thing for all those people who see things as positive uh, they would think that now these bioactive compounds uh, what can i say uh, so these bioactive compounds when it is seen as a single chemical entity will be looked on so basic for uh, what else uh, you know for for its pharmacokinetics and for people who work with multiple secondary bioactive compounds they would say oh the pharmacokin pharmacokinetics is very very difficult i could not understand the mechanism of single compound entity and for these people that is a gift that you need not worry at all where synergistic action where the action of several compounds put together and the overall action will be seen into effect and the overall action of all these compounds will be studied and the mechanism of action so for those people synergistic effects will be taken care of. so therefore we took the, the synergistic effect and we did not concentrate on chemical entity the reason being fruits will have a lot of polysaccharides and it will be very very difficult to identify a single bioactive compound when it is a fruit sample so what we did was we extracted the we extracted the sample using a lot of pola solvents it was a solvent extraction i think you might have already undergone a several sessions where how will you extract the compounds what are the kind of tests that you perform so anyway i am not going to dig deep into all those things i'm just going to explain what we did so what we did was we extracted the polyphenols number 2 we looked on the synergistic action of all the compounds present in the extract and we did not search for any single entity because fruit samples will have a lot of polysaccharides in it so number 3 what we did was we had a few bioassays being performed and all of you must be aware of the antioxidant assay where there is a very very common assay called the, the, the dpph diphenyl picryl hydrazine assay which is considered as godfather of antioxidant assays so whatever you work you usually do this assay so when we were working on it you know what we found really i know all of you must be crazy about green tea and i hope that a lot of people will be consuming green tea we were also working on green tea because india is also a producer of green tea the all these work happened in india and you know what friends i saw you no know, i personally saw with my own eyes that the kind of response that the green tea gives was the same kind of response that the fruits of muntinjia calabara gave so this was equivalent to green tea this was really equivalent to green tea uh, it, the, the, the assay the performance was so precise it was so great that 
the activity was more pronounced and more equal to green tea. Okay, and uh, now next, we tested on for GCMS analysis because we wanted to uh, work on any volatile compounds, so we gave it for uh, GCMS analysis. And the fourth thing, what we did was we checked on for its anti-inflammatory action using two assays. You know, all of you uh, that whenever it is being tested on uh, preclinical trials, it could be a rat, it could be a rodent, or it could be uh, uh, you know any other animal for that matter. So that's how we always do preclinicals, and only then we test on the clinicals, and then how how and then only then it is being immersed as you know drug for this one. So we uh, tested one second, friends. So we tested for its uh, uh, preclinical using a uh, using Vistar rat models using two assays. One was uh, inhibiting the carogenin induced for edema model, and the second was uh, we we saw that if the drug could reduce uh, the granuloma accumulation in the cotton pellet induced granuloma model in rats. To be very simple, let me tell you that in the first model, what we do is we inject carogenin, we bring edema on the foot of Vista rats, and then we give the drug and we see to that if this edema is, I mean, if this inflammation or edema is being reduced or not. This is what we did for the first model. And for the second model, what we did was we made an incision near the stomach of the Vista albino rat. We made a cotton into pellet. We introduced it into the into the into the body of the Vista albino rat to see if there are any accumulation of foreign bodies, and we saw if there is any granuloma being formed. This is how the control was maintained. And there were the other group of rats where we gave them the drug, and we saw if this granuloma was reduced or not. Okay, and we also did the neutrophil migration assay. Well, let me not get deep into it. And we found that these drugs seriously reduce the inflammation that was created in the rat and therefore these plants were bestowed with anti-inflammatory property therefore what we said was we did not bring this into product so we only popularized the consumption of these fruits we said that these fruits are edible so therefore we popularized and then there were a few companies who came forward to make jam jellies squashes and drink from this fruit so therefore, what we did was we, we gave them the technology transfer. We asked them to come up with product. And therefore, the, the one thing that we really did, what our team did was, we popularized the consumption of these fruit towards national food security. And number two, these fruits were best of with several pharmaceutical application. And therefore, we got this work published in a Springer journal. So this is how uh, uh, this work came into action. So this is one story that I really wanted to share with you. Now coming to the second story, uh, friends, can I know if the screen is visible about banana pseudostem? Yeah, yes. Yes, so you can see the banana pseudostem, right? Now this is the second story that I want to share with you. Of course, banana is, con you know, it is consumed all over the globe. But something about this pseudo stem is also interesting. Um, friends, you could see that this portion, this central portion, what you call the floral stem, this portion is really edible. I do not know about Brazil, where whether you will all consume this portion. In India, we do consume this portion. In fact, the juice that is being made from this pseudo stem, they take it for several kidney disorders. The juice from this inner floral part is used to solve several kidney disorders. I, I hope that all of you must be aware of the, of the statement of Hippocrates. He has said that let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. Uh, can I know if some of you have ever tasted this central portion of the pseudostem, banana pseudostem? Can you just raise your hands or answer me? No, no, you're, you're, well, it's not common, right? Yeah, I understand. But friends, this banana pseudostem, not the whole portion, the central portion alone 
you know, it has got several medicinal properties and the juice that is extracted from this pseudostem. One problem with this juice is the minute you extract, you know, it will undergo the Mylar reaction and the browning will happen. Therefore, the minute when you extract the juice, it will be a clear liquid. It will be a clear liquid. The, the sap will be clear liquid. But as time progresses, the clear liquid will have a slight color change because of the oxidation of polyphenols, because of mild reaction. But you need not worry, even if there is a slight color change, the pharmaceutical property will not diminish. I recommend this. If you have an opportunity, do taste the juice. It will be tasteless, but then it has got several beneficial properties. Okay, so this is something about the banana pseudo stem where this portion will be generally edible and I don't think that this will go waste. Now, talking about these outermost portion. Now, this is what was matter of our importance because all of us know banana plantain fruits will be consumed. And the, I mean, in India, I say the plantain fruits will be consumed. So it is, you cannot waste it. And this innermost portion, the floral part is, will again be consumed. So again, this is not, this will also be not be a waste, but this outer uh, rings of pseudo stem, this will generally be discarded, you know, uh, this outer sheath is, okay, these outer sheath will generally be not edible, we will not be taking it, we will not be eating it, only this inner sheath, I mean the inner floral stem portion will alone be edible. So therefore, this all of you know, now from, okay, uh, the reason why I have put this photo is, we make all these quiz and all these Indian dishes are made from this plantain flower portion. I do not know even if you have consumed the flower of banana. Have anyone consumed the flower of banana? No. Oh. No. Only the fruit. Oh my goodness. I'm sorry, you're not supposed to say it's a flower. Technically, you're supposed to say it. And inflorescence, okay. In India, again, the inflorescence is edible. And the one that you could see on the right, the images on the right are all several cuisine delicious dishes made out of the inflorescence. Okay, it is all made out of the inflorescence. The, the, the former one is what we call, in, in Tamil, we call it kutu, okay. And this is vada. This is plantain vada. So these are all the dishes that is being made from this inflorescence. And now talking about this outer sheath, again, this is not edible, but then these are made into fabric. So these are some of the uh, methods how you extract the fabric. I mean, the, the threads which will be open into the fabric and not only fabric, you can see a lot of products that is being made from these fibers. So there are baskets being made and even Indian saris are made from these fibers. So these fibers will have commercial importance. But one problem is that not always all these are taken into commercial importance. Uh, a minor quantity of these pseudo stem are discarded as waste. We do not want to discard them as waste because we are looking for zero wastage from natural resources. So what we literally did was the outermost sheath is of a banana, which you call the pseudo stem. Even though it has got commercial importance, there are a few outer sheath layers which are being discarded. So in the aim of zero wastage of natural resources, we took these outer stem, outer, outer sheath, we chopped it into pieces, we dried them under shade, we powdered them, and we subjected into extraction using organic polar solvents. And then the extraction was made. And oh, 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 friends. Yeah, maybe I can explain this later. I'll, I'll come to this topic now. So what we did was we extracted the polyphenols from this banana pseudo stem. And we supplemented it into sunflower oil. Now again comes the second question. Why sunflower oil? Again, speaking about Indian food cooking and Indian food ingredients, sunflower oil is one of the major edible oil in India where all households used to uh, use this oil for cooking purpose. But one drawback that is associated with sunflower oil is that 
these sunflower oil are very sensitive and then it is easily subjected to peroxidation so once we make several dishes like vada and all those say for example when i say vada it is it is made like akaraja akaraja am i right akaraja is is, is put in oil right yeah it is it is fried in oil yes so exactly okay the vada is something like equivalent to akaraja and more spicier than akaraja so what we do is we put it in sunflower oil and we you know fry it so one problem that is associated with sunflower oil is it is it is not so stable as the other oil so this will be easily subjected to lipid peroxidation therefore once lipid peroxidation starts there will be lot of melondialdehydes and several other aldehydes being formed which literally will lead to formation of several peroxidation products and several free fatty acid contents which when consumed will will cause a lot of problem inside the human body so what we were really trying to do is we wanted to stabilize the sunflower oil so what we did was we supplemented all the extracted polyphenols from the outermost sheaths of the banana pseudo stem into the sunflower oil and then we looked for its oil stabilization induced peroxidation because one more problem not only india is facing all over the globe we are facing is all the edible oil are supplemented with a lot of synthetic antioxidants you know i don't say they are natural they are all synthetic antioxidants like tbhq tertiary butyl hydroxyquinolin bha butylated hydroxy uh, anisole bht butylated hydroxy toluene so all these are synthetic uh, antioxidants which is been supplemented in sunflower oil in order to prevent this peroxidation but all these synthetic antioxidants are not good for human body therefore a search for natural supplementation was going on on the world for almost more than a decade where we were trying to contribute something from a natural resources especially from the resources where we could obtain some zero wastage okay this was what we did and we truly saw that the synergistic action of all these polyphenols friends i'm sorry there is a, a power problem which is happening in india because it is very hard summer and during summer we do have electricity problem and that is why you see the fluctuation of the light that is happening and it is evening 6 hours and 30 minutes so that's the reason you find this on and on of the fluctuation that you see behind me fine uh where were we we were talking about uh, uh the synergistic action of the polyphenols from the banana pseudo stem and uh, what else uh yeah and we found that synergistically they arrested the lipid peroxidation in the oil to some extent therefore sunflower oil were stable and the rate of the peroxidation the point that the peroxidation started was you know slowly reduced and therefore the peroxidation there was a lapse in the peroxidation time so and uh, this work was a boon to food industry and we got this work published i think late in 2010 so therefore this is some example of the wonderful action of the bioactive compounds from the plant resources okay now going back to the previous slide um what you can see in this slide is now why i show you this slide is banana the plantain is considered more or auspicious in india you could see the whole tree being cut and tied in the front of the houses so whenever there is a happy ceremony uh, being happening in the house it could be a housewarming ceremony it could be a marriage it could be a baby shower or it could be an engagement whatever it is any auspicious happening the minute you tie this plantain tree outside your home this is an indication that there is some auspicious good happy happening which is being happening in that house so this is a kind of you know uh, uh, an indication that there is some good thing happening in this house so this indicates the photo on the right the photo on the left 
you could see that banana i mean that the fruits of the plantain is always considered not just as a food also as a matter of status and respect so when you offer banana it is something like you're offering respect you're offering something with respect so this is uh, so why i have just shared these photos in order to explain the culture of india and the, the one the, the photos of town below you could see that there are more than 75 to 100 different varieties of plantain being grown in india so in order to differentiate all these things i have shown you the photo there uh, so these are the several different kind of uh, you know plantain the fruits of banana that we have in india so this slide is just uh, to show you the culture of india and, uh, and this has got nothing to do with the wonder by art of farm okay so this is my second story friends so friend i have covered two stories do you have anything to ask me uh, it could be anything or shall i continue with the third story i leave it to you please let me know if i can continue with the third story or you wanted to ask me something yeah what is it friend okay you guess you want me to continue fine okay now going to the third story yeah this is something about saponins it so happened that late in the year 2009 there was a very famous poultry farm i hope all of you know what a poultry farm is the place where a lot of chicken is being maintained for food and for eggs so this is what you call a poultry farm so there was a, a a famous poultry farm in south india especially in the state of tamil nadu who approached our laboratory seeking for a problem you know how poultry farm is a lot of chicken will be uh, maintained inside the cages and it will be the food will be supplemented and at some point the eggs will be harvested and even the flesh of the poultry will be harvested and it will be gifted to the shop so what these companies were actually facing was you know this farm this poultry farm was facing was they had the farm near a residential area where a lot of people were residing where a lot of houses were near the farm and it was the order you know the the order from the farm was so uh, what can i say unpleasing it was not comfortable so what they actually approached our laboratory was they asked us if we could supplement some natural product where it could bring down the uncomfortable smell of the excretory matter of the of these hens so they asked us if there are any natural bioactive compounds when consumed by the hen or by the chickens so that it will not affect their nutrition it will not affect at any stage it will not cause any harm to the hen or chicken but there will be a reduction in this noxious uncomfortable smell of the excretory matter of the hen so this was the question raised by the farm so that time we were working on several bioactive compounds and we were actually looking for a single compound entity so now this compound is about single compound entity okay um, it so happened that Uh, one of our colleague one of our lab went was working on the compound called saponin some interesting thing about this saponin is this single compound of the numerous bioactive molecules has a specific peculiar property called it has got a foaming and emulsifying property the minute you add water to the saponin and when you shake it in the erlen mayer conical flask you could see lot of foams being generated and as it has got emulsifying property you know why this property like let me tell you chemically why this property there is a combination of hydrophobic a glycone backbone and hydrophilic sugar molecule so this is how these compounds are made so because of this emulsifying property it so happened that the traditional medicinal system of india i hope you must have heard about ayush uh daniel can someone can someone uh, translate this the, the last message what appeared to be anama can you help me with this
Okay, okay, fine. No problem. Okay. So what was I talking? Yeah, I was talking about this, uh, the traditional medicine system of India, what we call Ayush, Ayurveda, Yunani, uh, Siddha. Okay, so uh, these are the, uh, a few of the traditional practices. A-Y-U-S-H, A stands for Ayurveda, uh, and uh, U stands for Yunani, Yes stands for Siddha, and then H stands for homeopathic medicine or allopathic medicine. Anyway, these both don't come into. It is a traditional system of Indian homeopathy. And I mean, it is not allopathy. It is only Indian homeopathy. Okay, so these are some of the uh, medicinal system that is commonly in practice. So let me just check on only to these three things. Ayurveda, Siddha and Yunani. Now, all these three traditional medicinal practices, they use these compounds one property is what you call laxative property so what we actually did was we supplemented the feed of the chicken i mean we supplemented the, the chicken the hen feed with this compound so literally what happened was a uh, very interesting thing now they these compounds when it was supplemented with the feed they enhanced the stability or the activity of the gastrointestinal tract microbes as a result what happened was there was a decrease in the nitrogen, I mean, urinary nitrogen excretion. And slowly what happened was it also improved the gut health. There was an improved gut, me gut mechanism. There was an improved immune mechanism. And there was also a reduction in the smell of ammonia. As a result, what happened was this uncomfortable smell of the excretory matter was reduced to very significant about because of this supplementation of saponin in the chicken feed. So this is one kind of story where when you supplement a few bioactive compounds with a feed, you could see two things happening where one was, okay, I'm sorry friends, um, where one was increased gut mechanism, increased immune mechanism, increased gut microbes stability and the other, other one was there was a reduction Okay, there was a reduction in this uncomfortable smell of ammonia. So as a result, what happened was the, the farm uh, owner was very happy with this. He was so happy. And I think now it is being made into product where saponin is added into the chicken feed, where this will give you both the properties. So this is an example for single compound entity about saponin being reducing the ammonia smell and the secretion of these poultry and enhancing the gut mechanism in the feed of the chicken okay so this is the third story what i really wanted to tell you now coming to the fourth story is about uh, a tree called scolopia carnata so this was my uh, one of the doctoral degree work what i was happening probably in the year 2010 if i'm not wrong you know, a decade back, not just a decade back, it's, it's, it's almost two decades back, okay, a very long time ago. Now, something so special about this tree is, this is an endemic species. Let me tell you what endemic species is. You can find this tree only in a few particular region of the globe, and you cannot find them anywhere in the globe. Since it is restricted to one particular portion, you call them as endemic species. So this tree is an endemic one, which is confined to just to South India, especially to the states of Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka and Kerala. And you can find them nowhere in the globe. So this is an endemic species. So we were working on, I was working on uh, the two plant parts, especially the leaf and the stem bark. Okay, and uh, like there were a lot of uh, activities being performed. Okay, this is one published work in industrial crops and products. I'll tell you what this work was. We extracted compounds from the stem bark and from the leaf, and we tested for acetylcholine esterase inhibitory activity, where all of you know that uh, Alzheimer disease. Okay, now. Alzheimer disease has got a new form of mechanism and people are looking for different modes of mechanism, different modes of action, different modes of inhibitory mechanism. But 
uh, friends, in fact, to tell you, you know, more a decade back, probably in the year 2011 and 2012, a lot of research were only confined to the breakage of this acetylcholine into acetyl and choline. So this was the only mechanism that was seen major as a, as a method or as a way to assess the acetylcholine esterase mechanism activity. But today it has got a lot of mechanism. It has got a lot of pathway. A lot of pathway has been broken down, has been annotated, has been discovered, invented, and has been published. Okay, now what I'm showing you is during the initial stages of these research that was happening all around the globe, the major concentration was given to the break of the acetyl and the choline compounds. Therefore, we were looking for the drugs that could prevent, that could prevent, let me repeat, that could prevent the breakage of acetylcholine because the esterase, acetylcholine esterase, this is one thief which will really break acetyl and choline molecule. So we were uh, working uh, on this mechanism uh, via in vitro pathway. It was not in vivo via in vitro pathway where we found out that the bioactive compounds in the stem back of Scolopia carnata had a competitive inhibition in preventing the breakage of acetyl and choline while the leaf extract, the leaf methanolic extract of Scolopia carnata had a non-competitive inhib inhibition mechanism preventing the breakage of let me repeat, preventing the breakage of acetyl and choline, where these two compounds play a major role in Alzheimer's disease. Okay. In addition to that, we were also, you know, once you say Alzheimer's disease, it is always associated with, um, you know, the pain mechanism, analgesic mechanism. So this is something that the, the globe will always work for. So the scientific community will always look for. So as you know, uh, traveling through those roads, once we found out that these compounds were good enough uh, in, in inhibiting the acetylcholine esterase uh, enzyme. So the next step, what we looked was, we looked for its analgesic activity in vivo. And we also found that, that these compounds also had added advantage of antioxidant activity. And all these things together, we got this work published in uh, industrial crops and products very long back as this as the analgesic and acetylcholine inhibition potential of polyphenols from scolopia carnata an endemic medicinal uh, plant species could have a lot of pharmaceutical property in the near future okay so this is one work and now what i'm actually going to explain to you is one unpublished interesting work of mine which is an angiogenic activity of stem bark and leaf extract from Scolopia carnata. Friends, all of you uh, must be familiar with this term angiogenic and anti-angiogenic. If you're working on cancerous studies, you always look for anti-angiogenic where you will find for the drugs which prevent the cells from being divided. Or in other words, the drug which can arrest the metaphase of the chromosome not allowing the cell to divide. Therefore, you will always look for anti-angiogenic mechanism in cancer studies. Okay, when it comes to cancer, your aim will always be on preventing cell division. So how will you prevent cell division? The common method is arresting cell division or in simpler way, arresting the metaphase uh, or arresting the anaphase of chromosome. Thereby, you prevent the cells being divided. Now I'm talking something opposite of that. I'm talking something about angiogenesis, which is sprouting of new cells, sprouting of new blood vessels, where there is multiplication of cell. And where do you see all these things? It is only in the wound healing mechanism. So once when you, when a wound is being caused, the next minute the body, what will respond is, it will try to heal the wound. So therefore the healing mechanism occurs through the cell division. So the cell has to divide. The cell has to proliferate. It has to multiply. So only when all these things happen, the wound will subsequently start to heal. So the, what I'm dealing now with you is the angiogenic activity for the wound healing mechanism. Okay. So this, this is what I was explaining to you, the wound healing mechanism, which will happen through a sequence of events, okay, which is a proliferative phase, a multiplication phase, where there will be a granulation tissue formation. So only when these granulation tissues are being formed, 
you can call this as angiogenesis where in wound healing mechanism angiogenesis is important anti angiogenesis should not happen whereas in cancer mechanism angiogenesis should not happen it has to be anti angiogenic activity so these are you know one thing which will have which will play a dual role I mean these compounds will have a dual role so now this is what we were talking about okay so now what happened was okay i think uh, okay appa appa enoda internet theendu pochu ma okay so uh, i'm sorry friends there was there was a you know a power power just a problem i hope now my voice is audible and i'm clear right okay there was an power problem the internet got disconnected so may i know if my voice is audible and the slides are visible yes okay so the slides are visible no problem ana maria oh the, okay okay i'll i'll yeah i'll again share the slide one minute ah hold up ana video off panta hold up so okay friend so i hope now the now the, the slides are visible okay so sorry for the interruption friends okay so now i'm trying to just explain you know this is one interesting uh, um assay where i thought i could explain this one assay in the assessment of efficacy of these bioactive compounds you know what this is this we call a chick corea antoic membrane cam assay where you take a fertilized chicken egg okay and then on the third day you make a small hole on one end of the egg this is because you will have to create an inflammation a tension inside the fertilized chicken egg and on day 5 what you do is you load the paper disc with the sample and then you place them over directly you know you place on the top of the blood vessel which is visible to you and what you do is on the 7th day you know these paper discs are generally discarded it is being taken out and the blood vessels will be counted for all the points where you find the sprouting of the blood vessel you know you can see when you uh, when you check out the blood blood vessels you could see that there will be points and then there will be again a you know a bifurcation and again at one point you could see the knot and then and again there will be a bifurcation so that's how the blood vessels will all be divided so this is how you 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 look for the counting of all these blood vessels and the blood vessels you got counted and then this graph you could see that okay the one on to the left is what you see how there is division of blood vessel okay in simple if i say in simple words 
if there is sprouting of new blood vessel or in other words if you find formation of lot of blood vessel you try to say that this bioactive compound will have the efficacy to form a lot of new cells if a compound is capable of forming new blood vessel it is again equal to formation of new cells indeed so this is one kind of work where we were looking for this and uh, so you could see a higher proliferation rate okay so this is what the disc is and and you can see the zone around the disc where there are a lot of cell i mean blood vessel proliferation so and we came to a conclusion that why cam model is number one it will be pathogen free and number two the immunological incompetence until the 18th day of incubation you will you will not find any interference of uh, any immunological bodies and then the angiogenic response will appear within 72 to 96 hours which is a very short duration and you can try to see the results to be a very short duration okay and the next one is argumentation of uh, angiogenesis which appears uh, to increase by the number of new blood vessel which could promote granulation in a very shorter time and this activity was because of the bioactive compounds like luteolin epigenin and rutin now all these are few bioactive compounds which we identified using hplc high performance liquid chromatography analysis and because of these compounds in the extract the synergistic mechanism of all these compounds combined together they supported the regeneration of new tissues you know formation of new tissues so therefore uh, this work is still unpublished you know if you ask me why uh, maybe i have a story but then uh, maybe later when we have time we will talk i will talk to you why this work is uh, not published uh, and this is still an interesting work and we have several dots which we have not yet solved there are several uh, uh, factors we have not solved and still this remains a mystery as we do not know what actually is happening okay and uh, so this warrants further clinical trials and pharmaceutical applications so this was one of the interesting work uh, that we had uh, uh, you know published and coming to the last story of the session uh, this is one kind of work what we uh, published uh, while working in ufs in the laboratorio the flavor of chromatographic and the last year we were working on several volatile compounds because volatile compounds also form one form of secondary metabolites which will have a wonderful aroma you know when you smell it you feel so pleasing and these aromatic compounds is also um, yeah i'm sorry can someone translate the message for me <laughs> I do. Yeah, these. Yeah, I came UFS for the postdoctoral uh, work. So, a few publications that I published, you know, that I worked in UFS probably sometimes back in 2015, 2016, some five, six, seven. I think eight years back. Now, these are the work that what we worked, what I had worked from eight years, eight years back. What is eight in Portuguese? No. Oh. Oito. Oh, I forgot. Ah, eight annals. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you, friend. Okay, so we were working on uh, the volatile. I, I saw you have participation in other papers. Okay, fine. So, uh, so this was a work that I carried out when my life during, yeah, in, in UFS, in yeah, UFS. Okay, so we were working on uh, volatile compounds. So volatile compounds for that matter. So all these compounds which will have a beautiful aroma. So uh, uh, one work was on tomatoes, the fruit tomatoes, which we procured from the local markets of Suiza. And then we subjected to do several drying processes like hot air and freeze and spray drying uh, mechanisms where we were working on, uh, you know, several products using tomato. And we saw to that uh, the aroma, I mean, the secondary metabolites present in the tomato could be preserved or could be encapsulated so that this could be made into several formulations uh, into several products and we found out that as usual the freeze and the spray drying products you know uh, they retained uh, all these 
volatile aromatic compounds so that in turn all these compounds bestowed with pharmaceutical applications so even in products when you consume all these things will definitely have health benefits so this was one kind of work and the uh, second kind of work was on uh, carrot slices when we subjected to freeze drying so that these carrots you know there are also several other works like uh, we had uh, published work with cabbages uh, and also uh, i'm just showing you a few of the published works uh, what we had done that these volatile compounds again when consumed you know even though they are uh, compounds which has got aroma so when consumed will benefit us with lot of health benefits before again secondary metabolites come into action where it is you know it has got wonderful ample amount of opportunities uh so this is how these wonderful mechanism work so to conclude friends to conclude i've come to the conclusion part uh what can i say is even though bestowed with a lot of beneficial properties lot of pharmaceutical uh, applications we still have a few pitfalls say for example i, I do not say it a drawback but then i can call this with a word called challenges you know why because the wonder bioactive compounds has got you know volatility which is volatile so that as long as you have the smell it is active but the minute this the you know the smell is lost it goes inactive so volatility number 2 insolubility not all compounds are water soluble and not all compounds are fat soluble it has got a various uh, degree of solubility from soluble to insoluble therefore a lot of compounds are insoluble so this is uh, one factor where we find challenge and then the third factor is it has got a strong aroma or a strong flavor which will influence when being supplemented in several products and the fourth thing is it is highly susceptible to various environmental and processing condition therefore all these are few factors make these bioactive compounds a bit difficult or a bit challenging to emerge out in large scale industries however there are several other mechanisms say for example like mechanism like encapsulation what your professor mayrin you know she usually does she encapsulate a long of a lot of compounds with cyclodextrin molecules if i'm not wrong mayrin so encapsulation what happens is these method of encapsulation you know they protect their functionalities you know or they cover or they mask their uh, what can i say some unwanted characteristics so it is all being masked and then even to some extent you can increase its bioavailability so uh, this encapsulation is one kind of work where you can use it with bioactive compounds where the bioactive compounds can be encapsulated and put into action so like that there are several other mechanism which requires a, a tuning or a small functionalization in order to implement in large scale industries so i think i'm done for the day mayrin so uh so that's it so this is one small piece of work what i wish that i can share with you on these wonder bioactive compounds So now the session is open for discussion. You can ask me anything if you wanted to ask. So Professor Mayer, are you there? I'm done for the day. So friends, if you have got if you have got any doubts or if you really wanted to ask me anything, you can please go ahead and you can ask me. Goma ji thank you again. Oh come on no thank you. Great hey, thank you friends. Always. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Maybe they are shy. It's not possible. <laughs> yeah friends this this now the session is open for discussion so I'll be happy if you have got some doubts. Yeah if it's all dubious Ana Maria, um, uh, I have a question actually. Okay, um, please go ahead. I've used the the head head cam um, assay for assessing breathability, right? It's uh, the major use of this technique, and 
I actually wasn't aware that it was used for uh, testing angiogenic or anti-angiogenic compounds. And I wanted to know if there is, uh, if it's a variation of the technique or it's the same technique actually when testing angiogenic yep. and anti-angiogenic uh, compounds. Just a minute, just a minute. I wanted you to ask the question one by one because I couldn't, it is not clear to me what you really wanted to ask me. Can you, can you just repeat? I'm sorry. I wanted to know if it is a variation of the technique or it's exactly the same technique when testing irritation and when testing angiogenic compounds. No, no, no. You're asking about the... Maybe, can you just the, translate? The, the, I, I, I don't understand what Nicole is, 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 is asking me. A variação do que é Nicole do Hatchcan? Isso, do Hatchcan. Yeah, the Cambacé is similar to both angiogenic and anti-angiogenic. Like, first, let me explain if this is what she had asked. If this is different, I want Mayrin to help me out. Okay, now let me uh, try to answer what Nicola asked me. If this is not the question, I want you to help me, Mayra. Okay. CAM assay is one stable assay where you use to test both angiogenic and anti-angiogenic. The experiment is same. Okay. If you are looking for the splitting of more number of blood vessels, then you look on to angiogenic activity. If you are looking for reduced number of blood vessel comparing with the control, with the control that you're maintaining, it is anti-angiogenic activity. Therefore, the, the process of experimentation is similar. But when you compare it with the control, if you are looking for angiogenesis, then it has to be splitting off more number of blood vessel. If you are looking for anti-angiogenesis, then it has to be reduction in the formation of blood vessel. Nicole, may I know if this is the question that you asked me? If this is not the question you have asked me, I want you to repeat the question, please. Um, I wanted to know if there was any difference between the CAN when scanning for angiogenic compounds and when uh, using the assay for irritation, if there was any additional step for using the same technique and testing different different things. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point that you asked me. Now I understand your question. This is one of the main reason why we couldn't publish this work and we still find a lot of mystery. So say, for example, let me take just two compounds into example compound rutin and compound luteolin. So rutin and luteolin are two compounds. They are two single flavonoid compounds present in this extract. Rutin and flavonoid, when we test it for angiogenesis, okay, when we test it for angiogenesis, it showed angiogenic activity where we found that splitting of blood vessels. When the same rutin and when the same luteolin was tested on animal model for anti-angiogenesis, you know what they did? They did not split the met. They did not split the bed vessel. I mean, there were no proliferation of granuloma, so therefore they behaved differently. Okay, yes, they behaved differently. So these compounds were so mysterious. Like they also show angiogenic effect in effects in some model and they showed anti-angiogenesis in some model. So these compounds showed both these activities. So it was so difficult for us, you know, to, uh, to really understand the mechanism of action, like why these compounds behave differently in angiogenic model and in anti-angiogenic model. So it has got a different uh, experimentation method. So they behave differently and the model varies. But these compounds, you know, they play a dual role. In anti-angiogenic model, they behave like anti-angiogenic agents. In angiogenic model, they behave like angiogenic agents. 
so this was one of the reason where we seriously couldn't solve the mystery like how these compounds play a dual role or they play different different independent individual role in different models so this was also one of the reason why we couldn't publish your work nicole i hope i have answered your question like did i really answer your question yes thank you thank you Okay. Yeah, it's better than Asura's pen. Okay, you're asking about the portion that is edible. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it's um, this center portion, the portion that is edible, will be different from the other layers of pseudostem. Okay, the main difference is the layers will be very intact. Whereas in the other pseudo sheet layers, you will find a lot of air gap between them, which means the fibrous portion will be very thick. But this edible portion, there will be fibers, but then the, 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 um, the quantity of fibers inside the floral portion will be reduced. So what will happen is when you, you can chop it into pieces. Whereas the outermost portion will not be that easy. You cannot chop it. You will have to tear it because of the fiber. But whereas the inner portion is what you can chop. So it is just chopped, put in a blender, crushed, and then it is being filtered. Okay, when you use a filter, just the sap or the, or the juice is being filtered and all the fiber portion is being retained on the stainer. And, and, the, and the bottom portion, what you filter is what you consume fresh no processing just consume fresh and you know what anna maria it is it it is really found to cure lot of kidney related problems all the kidney gallbladder stones it is found you know it is found to dissolve all these stones a lot of kidney problem is being solved with the help of this fresh sap juice from the innermost floral portion so that portion you could chop into pieces not the other portions. Yeah, there is a dose mechanism where you can take. You're not supposed to drink it every day because it is, you know, it has got a very strong compound. So what they do is today if you take if, if you drink this juice for the next three days you will not take and then on, on the fourth day you will consume so you will you will give a few gap in consumption of this dose you know it is like you will have to follow a procedure you're not supposed to drink it like a water every day yeah é, Luisa is the, uh, is my question is a question but just to complement Aí eu vou pedir para a Ana Maria me ajudar, porque tem alguns termos ali que eu acho que é meio regional, que eu nem conheço. <risos> tipo, verdade, mangará é. para lembedouro. Bom dia, desperta. bom dia. É, eu, bom dia. Isso não é uma pergunta. Eu, eu peço permissão para falar em português, porque são, tem muita diversidade. Goma e diz, do understand em português? É, falar em português. Menos what? Okay. I can't remember if you understand Portuguese okay. or not. Ah, uh, very little. You wanted me to understand Portuguese? I, no, <laughs> because I don't remember. But it's okay, we will help. Ana Maria and me. Let's go by. I now fall in Portuguese. Hey, Mayri, translate for, for me, please. Uh, actually... Eu quero dizer assim, que tem aquela parte da, é o, é o pseudo, eu não sei se, é, se ela chama pseudo estranho, né? algo assim, que eu vi ali na, nas figurações. Então, nós utilizamos muito a, a banana, tanto assim para a própria fruta, como ela perguntou aí, não foi se, qual era a utilidade, as pessoas disseram que usavam muito em... em 
como fruta. Mas eu quero dizer que nós usamos também aquela pseudo, é, não sei, talvez seja o nome pseudo estranho, para, como expectorante, para fazer lambedor como expectorante. Nós usamos na, na sal da família. Tenta dizer para ela. Nós a usamos. É, nós usamos também. Yes. Ok. 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 Ok, I understand. I mean, there are people who consume, but then it is not very common in diet. You don't eat it in common in diet. Yeah, I understand. I understand. Not just, not just Anna Maria. I'll tell you one more thing. Uh, I had a few friends from Brazil visiting India. They came home here. Okay, uh, uh, it was Feliz and uh, uh, from from Laboratorio de Chromatografia Analasia a few months back. They came India. They came home, and then uh, from the vegetable, the plantain vegetable, you actually eat the fruit, right? The initial period when it is a vegetable, when it is not ripe, when it is when it is not ripe as a fruit. Uh, when it is unripe, what we do is we treat it as a vegetable, we chop it, we apply masala and we consume. And uh, this friend who visited home, he was not, he, he never found that so interesting in Brazil. But when he came to India and then he uh, tasted with the kind of formulation that we prepare, he said that this is so delicious, I never knew that banana before becoming into a fruit as a vegetable will will taste so delicious so he was he found it so interesting so one more thing that lies is the kind of formulation or the kind of cuisine that you make into matters that makes a food interesting or not interesting that plays a major role so once it is cooked delicious people will find it interesting yes Okay. Mangara. Okay, Mangara. Sim, sim. Okay. Entendi. Uh, please translate from me, Sara. Eu gostaria de acrescentar que nós usamos também a casca, a entrecasca da banana é, para friccionar em verrugas devido à saponina. Então, diga assim, entra dentro da casca. Na casca. Yes, yes, skin issues. I understand. Yeah, that's that's a common thing. Yes, true. Yes. Well, uh, saponin also form an important compound. Yes, you can find the forms. But in addition to saponin, you also have a lot of other polyphenols and flavonoids, which is also used for skin treat I mean skin infection. Of course, she is right. Uh, Louisa is right that it has got saponin. But in addition to saponin, there are also several other secondary metabolites which makes the banana peel to contribute a lot of pharmaceutical application for skin infections. Yeah, because saponin generally is treated for three things. One, because of its foaming effect, it is used to remove the impurities. 
Number two, it is used as lact lact laxative, which means it will ease your bowel movement. You will not find you will not have constipation. Or once when you have constipation, when this being taken in, it will ease your bowel movement. Okay, so this is what saponina greatly looked for. Guys, see first time. Entendi. É, eu, outra coisa que eu gostaria de acrescentar é que nós usamos na saúde da família, em população carente, o bife da casca da banana. É, ela é como um complemento alimentar. Flash. Okay, I understand. I understand. Nice, nice to know that. Usamos também as em compostagem diversas partes. Ah, okay. Ah, nice. That's nice to know. Thank you very much. Acho que é isso, então. Mais alguma coisa? Goma de... Thank you again. Yeah. yeah. Um, Alison said for you, congratulations on the presentation and work. And thank you again. Come on. You're welcome, Professor Mayron. And all your students are very interesting. So I hope that they really understood. I know that there are a lot of people who have problem with English because this is something that I always say. English is neither your language nor my language. It is lingua franca. So we can talk as we wish as long as we only understand each other. So even though uh, uh, they could not reply to me, I will be really happy if at least they understood whatever I was trying to tell them. And I hope the session, I hope they liked the session. Okay, thank you, friend. Mais alguma coisa, gente? Não? Thank you, thank you. Thank you. See you, friend. Thank See you. you.